10 random magic cards rated day number 40. Wow, really making it, aren't we, y'all? Let's see what the first card of the day is. Hope your Saturday's been all right so far. Let's make it a little bit better. We got Smoldering Marsh here. This is a land, which happens to be a swamp mountain, by the way. And it enters tapped unless you control two or more basic lands. Just really, 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 really good. Just fantastic. <laughs> you have to have at least two things, so it has to be a third land or onward but in commander that means it's pretty easy to make sure this always comes into play untapped and it has two basic land types and cheese man or just land types i shouldn't say basic they're not it's not a basic land you know you know what i'm saying i'm gonna give this card like a like an eight <laughs> you know like this is one of the better kind of dual land cycles um in a way in a way and it's surprising that you can get this for so cheap but i guess it's been reprinted into the ground just a really, 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 really good cycle of lands, man. Number two on the day is Shreds of Sanity. This is three mana, two and a red for a sorcery. Return up to one target instant card and up to one target sorcery card from your graveyard to your hand. Then discard a card. Exile Shreds of Sanity. Sorcery speed kind of sucks on this. This is an Eldritch Moon. I don't remember this like at all. <laughs> That's pretty unique art, too. You'd think I would remember this, but, you know, I only have room in my brain for so much. It's a cool idea, though. You know, you can bring back two cards so that's like a divination right you spend a card and you get two cards back but you do have to discard a card so it's always going to be like basically even on card advantage um there's going to be times too where you only get one thing back and you have to spend two cards and that feels bad but obviously you can like madness something or reanimate something or flash it back or whatever so this card could definitely be an upside definitely so if you're playing on curve i'm not too sure about it because you want to go like Turn one instant, turn two sorcery, turn three this, discard a Traxa, turn four reanimate it. Like, that's really, really tough to do, actually. So, I don't know, but it is pretty cool. I like the design of it. I'm going to give it like a 4.748. Sure. 4.748. That sounds fair. It doesn't, it's not actually that bad. <laughs> but, oh, it's Fleshbag Marauder, everybody. How actually old is Fleshbag? Okay, Shards of Alara, this, this ugly fella. This tall drink of water. This is three mana, two and a black for a 3-1 Zombo Warrior. When it comes into play, each player sacrifices a creature. Uh, Fleshbag Marauder is probably the creature that has been most sacrificed to this ability <laughs> throughout time. You know, you just sacrifice your old Marauder. But sometimes you have a token or something like that. Or a creature you want to sacrifice. Obviously, it triggers all the you sacrificed a guy and all the death triggers and stuff in Aristocrats. Just a cool card that sees play in most aristocrats decks or at least some version of this effect does because they printed kind of better versions at this point plague crafter and stuff like plague bearer plague crafter either way they <laughs> they printed better versions of this effect at this point but still good still tried and true still a good creature type too so i'm gonna give marauder like a 6.2 man a playable magic card for sure but we'll move on to either sworn adjudicator five mana four and a blue for a four four Vidalkin knight it's an artifact creature with flying you can pay three mana it's one and orzov colors and tap this to destroy a creature or enchantment all right you can also pay two and a blue to untap it so whoo that's a beast of a card right there first printed in conflux but it's been in a few commander products since then um, I remember when this was a thing, uh, mostly in like old school commander a while, while back, but haven't really seen it in a while. Um, I was going to say they print it in a, a bunch of commander products. I feel like all I could, all I have to do is look to my right and like there it is, has been printed in multiple commander products. I have the brothers war commander set. So the two decks, right. Uh, that are all in like retro frames. Yep, it is. All right. Just making sure that I wasn't like losing my mind, <laughs> but yeah, I've always loved this thing. But obviously it only goes in like very specific like Esper Commander decks or whatever. So, you know, it's not in everything. But when you do get to play it, man, mm, 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 mm. if you've never untapped it and used it twice in the same turn or whatever, then sorry. It's just really, this card's awesome. Um, reminds me of cards like you know, Royal Assassin from back in the day too. It's just, I like a lot about this card. And it's also a 4-4 flyer. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> you, tap, you tap it down, kill something, untap it, swing. Let's go. So. I like this thing. I will give it a 6.49. We'll go with that. We'll do that. It is a little expensive and what I don't who cares? I don't care. 
We'll move on to Distinguished Conjurer. Two mana, one and a white for a 1-2 human wizard. Whenever another creature enters the battlefield under your control, you gain a life. You can also pay four and a white and tap it to exile another target creature you control and return it to the battlefield under its owner's control. So good job in the art here. Nils Ham, by the way, been printed in Jumpstart 2022 and Modern Horizons 3. You can get it for really cheap from MH3. And it's like a... It's another, you know, Soul Warden kind of effect for those decks. We just saw a flying one printed at this mana cost in a Bloomborough as I record this. Could be watching it 10 years from now, but you still know that card exists, right? Probably, maybe. These always have, you know, some relevance because life gain commander decks just can't get enough of this effect for the most part. But at two mana, they're never going to see play in like the Soul Sisters decks that really want these effects to cost one mana. You know what I mean? So... Cool card. Um, can't really give it more than like a 5.6, but I'm going to give it a 5.79. I am going to give it more than that. 5.79. Uh, cards like this are always good. And this one has the you know other effect of being able to trigger itself when you use its ability and, you know, get cool ETB triggers again. So all that's awesome. Yeah, good card. Move on to <laughs> Fire Elemental. Let's look at Revised. Actually, let's go way back. Put on that Bobby Womack. I want to go way back. This is five mana. Three and two red for a five, four elemental. That's the card. It isn't good. Classic Melissa Benson art. Um, <laughs> another, man, the cards back then, you know, 11-year-old uh, dev would open a pack of magic cards and be like, I feel funny. You know, so, <laughs> so good. I guess good job on the art, Melissa Benson. Um, I'm going to give this card like a two. <laughs> it's just not. Back then, it was like, dude, it has five power for five mana. Do you understand? Like, yeah, it's not good. <laughs> we'll move on to Sulfur Vent, though. Um, this comes into play. To have we done this card? I feel like we may have. This is, uh, I'm not sure. comes into play tapped. You tap it for a black mana, or you can tap it and sack it to get a blue and a red mana. Actually kind of cool. <laughs> There's a lot of reasons you might want to sacrifice a land. All the way from, like, land taxi, sort of claim jumper effects, you know, tith tithing. Um you know, cards that care about how many lands your opponent has, uh, all the way down to balance, which you can't play in commander but still. Um, yeah, there's reasons why you might want to be down on lands or have lands in your graveyard. Cause you're going to bring them all back with a splendid reclamation kind of effect. Right. And this is cool for that too. So in the meantime, it's ramp. It's one land that produces two mana. Awesome. Just cool. Just always good. Only ever printed an in invasion, by the way. Um, I don't know if this tr if that's true of this entire cycle or not, but just a pretty cool little cycle of lands that really doesn't get a whole lot of love nowadays. I'm going to give this a 7.6. Yeah, I'll do that. It's just a good card. It makes three different colors of mana, guys. Especially back then when like there weren't a whole lot of cards that did that in the land department. So, yeah, this, this is a card with a pedigree. It has done some things. We'll move on to Pillar Drop Rescuer here. This is five mana, four and a white for a 2-2 Spirit Cleric with flying. And it enters the battlefield. You return a creature card with mana value three or less from your graveyard to your hand. Not super great. Just not. If we return the creature to play, we might be talking, but we still probably wouldn't, to be honest. It was originally printed in Strixhaven. Yikes. I actually like Strixhaven. Nobody else did. I'm like one of four people that like that set on the planet. Um, I defend it. I really do. I have a whole video defending it, actually. <laughs> but the execution sometimes wasn't great. And this is one of those cards. There's going to be bad magic bad magic cards in every single set. We just happen to get one from Strixhaven here. Um, but, you know, it's not horrible. It still gives you, you know, it replaces itself in your hand. In its hand. Yeah, it replaces itself in your hand <laughs> when it comes down. It has a cool ETB trigger. You can blink it, I guess. So I'll give it a 3.2. We'll go there with it. Moving on to Gruel Gilgate. Ugh, what do you give Guild Gates? Uh, I'll give Guild Guild Gates. Guild, I will give Guild Gates three G's in a row. Even if, especially if you say Gruel Guild Gate. I'll give Guild Gates. See, I can't do it. I'll give Gruel Guild Gate. Bam, nailed it. A uh, 5.2. <laughs> Basic lands get a five, right? So 5.5 .5 for a Guild Gate is what we'll go. We'll go, we'll go with that. Uh, channel. Oh, we got channel up next. Abandoned like everything. <laughs> it's it's just restricted in vintage, and restricted in timeless, 
and then it's not legal or banned in literally every other format on Scryfall. So this is two green mana for a sorcery. Until end of turn, you may add colorless mana to your mana pool for one life each. These additions are played with the speed of an interrupt. <laughs> life is spent life spent this way is not considered damage. Let's read the Oracle text. Until end of turn, anytime you could activate a mana ability, you may pay one life. If you do, add colorless. All right. So that is also... Weirdly worded. <laughs> I actually kind of like the way that it's worded in the first place. Just pay a life, add a colorless mana. Uh, till end of turn, you you have that ability. You gain the ability. Pay a life, add a colorless. Um, this is part of probably the most infamous combo in the history of magic. There are going to be people who only have a passing, you know, knowledge of Magic the Gathering that can still tell you, you know, turn one, Black Lotus, Mountain, Channel, Fireball. Opponent's dead. <laughs> You know, like channel um 19 life plus the extra green mana from your Black Lotus uh, will be 20. X equals 20, right? And then tap your mountain to cast Fireball. Fair X equals 20. And you can do that on turn one. And it's disgusting. And it's one of the reasons that channel is you know restricted um, as such because it can do that. So that's really stupid. <laughs> it's a dumb way to lose a game of Magic, but a really fun way to win one. Um, I'm told. I've never done it. So, awesome card. Richard Thomas did great, by the way, on, on this art. Um, fantastic. It almost looks like a Quentin Hoover, doesn't it? But it's not. But it's, I, was, I was getting ready to say Quentin Hoover nailed it, but no. Just wonderful, magical, iconic magic card that um, is part of some of the most broken things you can do from the very start of the game. So, I'm going to have to give Channel a 9. Uh, just an absolutely busted card and a great one to end the day on, by the way. So let me know how you would rate Channel, because that's kind of a weird one. I think people will say it's narrow. It deserves an 8 point something, whatever. Or even less. If it was printed in standard, it wouldn't see any play. Yes, it would. Come on. <laughs> yes, it would. Stop. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, card's busted. Card's literally broken. If you can't tell by the <laughs> legality in all these different formats, card is actually completely cracked wide open. So... Yeah, what would you give channel? I wanna, I wanna know. And I'll also see you tomorrow, everybody. Have a good rest of your Saturday night. I have to turn the thing off. I always forget that I have to press record again, so I get to say bye again. Bye.